Today on Cross Chop, let's take a fresh, brand spanking new look at my favorite collection of video game controllers of yesteryear, the practically immaculate Nintendo GameCube controller. So it occurred to me the other day that it's been more than five whole years since my last update on my Nintendo GameCube controller collection, and I've made a little bit of progress tracking more of them down since that last video came out. Now, I have not yet completed the entire worldwide set of GameCube controllers, and I know there are gonna be some comments about how I'm missing the Club Nintendo exclusive ones, and the two Char's customized color ones, and how there are other people out there who have pretty quickly completed entire sets. But personally, I'm enjoying a nice slow pace of growing this collection. I only buy these controllers when a good deal comes around and it's in my budget to do so because, as you guys all know, collecting pretty much everything GameCube has gotten really freaking expensive. Despite this, I have added several more over the last few years that I'm really fond of playing games with and having available here in my game room, and I'm really excited to share them with you guys today. Stay tuned in for the whole video so you can see the full display of controllers toward the end. Drop a like on this video if you're a GameCube diehard like me and Let's take a look at these puppies. The first one we've got is the standard Jet Black controller, which was available worldwide with the GameCube's launch in 2001, and which could be bought individually or within a matching console set. The one we're looking at here is the same one I've had since I bought it new as a kid, probably back in 2002 or so. This controller and the next one I'll show you likely have the most hours of my gameplay on them out of all of the ones I'll show you here today. Number two is a duo of Spice Orange controllers. Like the Jet Black one before, this color was available worldwide in 2001, but was released only in more limited quantities outside of Japan. The one here in my right hand is the same one I got as a kid, and I'm pretty sure I got it at Walmart. I do know that I bought this one sometime later than the Jet Black one, because I remember liking the orange one so much that it kind of became my main controller for a while anytime I was playing something on the GameCube. The one here in my left hand was bundled with the Spice Orange GameCube set that I imported from Japan back in 2016. These two controllers are identical and built in exactly the same way, but my childhood one is actually in a little bit better condition. The most iconic and common controller of all is, of course, the standard Indigo gamepad. It's the one that came with every Indigo console and was available in every region, so these guys are everywhere and remain the least expensive official ones from Nintendo. This is unfortunately not the same one I had as a kid, and I virtually never play with this one because the joystick needs to be resituated, and I prefer playing with the other models more. But it is, of course, a must for any GameCube controller collection. Next up, we've got the Black Super Smash Bros. Edition controller, which which came out in November 2014 with the launch of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. It was sold worldwide and was available both on its own as well as within a Super Smash Bros. game bundle. Some folks aren't too fond of this one because of the materials they used and they've reported having some reliability issues, but overall I really like this one and thankfully I haven't had any of those issues so far. I thought it was pretty cool to see Nintendo release a brand new version of a product that had been discontinued years ago, but also because it's got a cord that's more than three feet longer than the standard GameCube controller length. And I personally really like the textured plastic that, in my opinion, adds kind of a nice ergonomic feel. There also exists the structurally identical white Super Smash Bros. Edition controller, which was released only in Japan about two weeks after its Black Smash Bros. counterpart. I imported this one from Play Asia back when it released and used it to play with Smash on Wii U quite a bit. So far, this is the only white GameCube controller that I have, but I'm hopeful that I can eventually add the other Japan-exclusive white one to my collection. This Indigo and Clear controller was available at retail in all regions, but it was never packed in with a console bundle, so you could only ever get it as a standalone item. I got this one in July of 2014 in a really nice Craigslist haul, and although the joystick also needs to be tightened back up, it's otherwise in pretty good shape. Easily one of the best looking controllers for this console is this really nice kind of teal colored one that Nintendo named Emerald Blue. It came out only in Japan toward the very end of 2002 and could be bought either on its own or within the Pikmin 2 Special Edition starter set. I'm pretty sure I bought this one in late 2014 or early 2015, but I do know that this was the very first video game item I ever imported from Japan. It's in excellent condition, it feels great, it looks great. I just love this thing. The newest controller I bought is actually still in brand new condition, and it's the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Edition controller. I got this one right around the launch of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate back in 2018, and I haven't opened this one up simply because, well, I already have so many open that I like to play games with already, including two other black ones that look almost exactly like it. I'm sure I'll open it eventually, but for now, it's just hanging out in my reserve, looking purdy. The next item I want to mention very briefly is this little microphone. 
Now, this is obviously not a controller, but it is an official Nintendo peripheral that came out worldwide back in 2006 and was bundled with a handful of games like Mario Party 6 and 7. There's also a black version out there that was bundled with Karaoke Revolution Party, but I believe the functionality was the same. I'm unfortunately missing the little plastic clip that attached this microphone to the top of your controller, so I'm hopeful that I can eventually find that piece too. In any case, it's a unique GameCube controller accessory that I thought would be cool to highlight for a moment. Now, the standard wired GameCube controller that we all know and love carries a hard-earned fandom in its own right, but Nintendo's wireless WaveBird set a new bar for wireless game controllers when it launched in December of 2002. Instead of relying on infrared signals like companies had tried to use with video game controllers in the past, the WaveBird uses radio frequency communication for a stronger, more reliable connection to your GameCube system. This gray WaveBird controller was sold in all regions, and although the WaveBird is largely ignored for competitive play because of its input lag, it's frequently preferred by GameCube enthusiasts and retro gamers for its convenience and comfort. Now, before we take a look at the last few controllers, let me know with a comment what your favorite GameCube controller is and which one you don't have that you would want the most. My personal favorite to play with in most situations is this Platinum Waybird, and I like it a lot for two reasons. For one, the convenience factor we already discussed. It sits right back here on this controller shelf, so I can grab it and start playing a game really quickly. Second, the Platinum is just a little bit more used and scuffed up than my Gray Waybird, so I feel better about keeping this one out and playing with it all the time just in case it gets dropped or scratched. Unlike the ubiquitous Grey Wave Bird, the Platinum one was released only in North America and Japan when it came out in 2002. This next one is the second newest controller I've added, and it's another Japan exclusive. The Clear controller came out in 2004 and could only be acquired by purchasing either the Enjoyment Plus Pack or the Pokemon Coliseum Enjoyment Plus Pack. I really love this one, not only because of its awesome translucent design, but it's also in excellent condition. It seems like it was barely played with by whomever the previous owner was in Japan, and its uncommonness here in North America makes it especially cool to have around. And then we've got the actual biggest oddball of the bunch, the gigantic ASCII keyboard controller. If you've been hanging out at Crosschop for a while, you've probably already seen this one in another video or two. But for those who aren't familiar with it, this third-party gamepad was released only in Japan back in September of 2002 and it was designed just for a single game that could take advantage of the keyboard functionality, and that was Fantasy Star Online Episodes 1 and 2. It's got two cables coming out of it, and this purple plug is what allowed the standard GameCube controller buttons to work with any GameCube game, and this gray one is what allowed the keyboard functionality to operate within Fantasy Star Online. If you're interested in learning more about this controller, I've got another video up on my channel with a lot of more detailed information that you can access by clicking the card up here in the left corner, or by clicking the link in the video description. Now that we've seen each of the controllers in my collection, I want to ask, did this video help you decide on another controller that you want to track down? Or did you learn anything that you found interesting? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more GameCube videos like this one, we've got a whole playlist of other stuff you can watch by clicking right here, along with a bunch of other fun videos on the channel that I truly think you'll enjoy. Friends, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And as always, always play heavy.